Today I'm going to be drawing a pretty simple comic. Now it's not going to be particularly great, but the purpose of this is more to show the process. Down here I've got a really rough script to go by, along with the real flag colors taken from Wikipedia. Now the reason I do this is honestly just because it looks a lot better. Now you can already see that I've got two pretty nice circles going. I don't have a lot of tips to drawing circles except for one. Use a three or five pixel brush. Doing this hides a lot of flaws and helps your balls look nice and smooth. So the art here today won't really be advanced except for one thing. I'm going to be drawing the UK. I'm going to be drawing the UK a lot. Now I don't know if you know, but of all the flags, the UK is probably one of the worst. And what makes this flag to me such a pain is obviously all of these lines. And then of course the work that is required to shade them in. Now I'm a lazy prick, so I've copy and pasted the original circle and colored the one I plan to draw the flag in yellow. This will allow me to color outside the lines and let me correct it easily at the very end. You'll see me doing this a lot throughout the duration of this video. So there I just went back to grab my proper colors from uh, the Wikipedia flags, so at least that way we can make the UK look like the UK. I'm not a fan of those default faded MS Paint shades of color. They kind of look like crap. Now obviously this guide is pretty much just for MS Paint, since that's what I'm using. I'm learning games slowly, but I've loved Paint for a good decade now. It's good. It works. God save the que uh, king. We're finally almost done with our first Britain. Now, I wasn't lying when I said it's kind of a pain. Now, I'm going to have him look pretty dejected here since his flaws are about to be laid bare and he's going to be forced to beg the EU for membership again, which I imagine has got to hurt. Now, we just got to put our black circle over top. Now, make sure you have transparent selection on when you do this, and then this way we can fix our shading mess from earlier. And then after that, all we have to do is add a top hat, a monocle, and we're done. So you see, for the top hat and monocle, I like to give it a little bit of shine, maybe a little bit of a lens glare on the monocle. Helps to give it shape, and it also just looks nicer. Now, it's not like these comics need to look nice. You ever see the originals? Whoever made those was probably going through alcohol withdrawal with shaky hand. They look pretty rough. Once I've finished drawing Britain, I'm going to move on to my favorite part of the panel. The part where I don't have to draw Britain anymore. Instead, I'll be drawing a much more forgiving character, artistically at least. And that's going to be the European Union. I like to draw this flag because it's simple as hell, and honestly, I love yellow and blue together. You know, complementary colors and all that. With flags like this, I don't even bother with that yellow outline from before since the shading here is going to be much easier. Since we have the EU dealing with a groveling Britain, I'm going to give them a nice smug look. I heard it comes natural to most Europeans. You may have noticed that a few seconds earlier I drew a circle and I dropped it to the panel below. It was supposed to be the European Union, but it was much too small. For this panel, since the UK is begging, I need the EU to be big and confident. However, that ball below was nice and round and plump despite its size. It'll make for a good Canada in the next panel. Despite their land size, Canada's presence on the world stage shouldn't allow them to be that large. Posers. Sorry, I got distracted there. The stars on the EU are now finished, so I can go on to shading this bad boy. Like I said before, we're only working with one color of shading here, so we don't really need to do the whole song and dance with the yellow outlines. All we have to really do is just zoom in as close as we can get and use the single pixel brush so that way it's as clean as possible without getting into the actual line. And then you just draw it across as you normally would. Whoa! Uh oh It seems I've made the characters a bit too large for the panel here so the dialogue is going to be a little bit rough to try to fit. Normally I would just do it all over, but since I'm filming this, it seems that I'm just going to have to try and make do. Now, it's probably going to look like a jumbled mess, at least when it comes to the dialogue. And you're going to have to forgive me, and I hope one day maybe I can forgive myself. Now, on the topic of dialogue, let's talk about speech lines. The thing, you know, that connect the dialogue to your character. Now, when I'm drawing them, I like to make them the color of the character that's actually speaking. So, say we had the United Kingdom talking to America. I would give the United Kingdom red and America blue. Even though they both share red and blue, I like to think of the U.S. as blue. So, I would use blue. I think using these colors looks a little bit more, you know, interesting than black. It draws the eye better. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who really like these fantastical speech lines. Like, I'm talking a, a mini version of a flag. You know, to each their own, I think it looks a little bit overcomplicated and it draws a little too much attention. But maybe I'm just lazy. Who knows? Okay, so we are on the second panel. Now, I'm not going to bore you again with another how-to of how to do it, since it's not really necessary, since ugh, I'm just on to my second Britain by now. Please send help. But also, if you need help, please refer back to two minutes ago on how to draw this. Now, what I'm looking forward to is finishing Papa Albion, because once he's out of the way, I can finally start drawing the star of this comic, and that's my homie Canada. Now, this one is relatively easy to both draw and shade, and if you have trouble drawing a maple leaf, 
honestly, the only advice I have for you is to just grab a reference picture and do your best. Because after all, that's all any of us can do. Being a Canadian, I've drawn a lot of maple leafs in my time, so I've kind of gotten the hang of it. But I can see how it could be difficult for others. Whether or not you actually want to draw a raccoon skin hat for Canada is always up to you. I always used to do it, but I got lazy as time wore on. Besides, nobody cares either way. Nowadays, I'm just thankful that the Canadian flag got updated in the 60s. If y'all haven't seen it, the old Canadian flag was a mess of everybody's least favorite things. We had Union Jacks, we had complicated seals, and a big time colonial overture. Now, picture the Australian flag, and now picture it drenched in blood. And instead of those funny ten-pointed stars, you have a shield that shows the, civil, uh, the sigils of every European power to ever conquer Canada. Then try drawing that five times in a row. It ain't fun. Well, here I am rambling on about Canada, and I haven't even continued to draw it yet. It's kind of like uh, Trey Parker always said that joke about uh, Canadians in South Park, how they always have to make themselves so self-important. I'm Canadian, eh? With their heads bouncing up and down. That's where that came from. But since I'm, you know, still thinking about the old Canadian flag, I kind of still want to talk about it. So, funnily enough, the governments of both Manitoba and Ontario hated the new Maple Leaf flag, and honestly, they preferred the old Conqueror Colonial one. So thanks to this small beef, once the Maple Leaf was adopted as the national flag, these two provinces made their own variations of the old Red Ensign into the actual flags of Manitoba and Ontario. So the old colonial British history, it still lives on to this day through those two flags. And this whole argument, actually, about the national flag was, seriously enough, the third closest time Canada's ever come to having a civil war. The first two times were obviously the Quebec referendums where they wanted independence, but that goes without saying. Sorry for going on about flags again, but for what it's worth, this comic's not too good anyway. I mostly chose this one pretty much for this exchange that I wrote out here, where we have the UK going, I imagine, in a proper, posh voice. Hello, Canada, in it. How are you managing the colony? The what? The economy. How are you managing the economy, old bean? Both of those accents were pretty rough. Sorry, guys. I'll chalk it up to stage fright. I'm uh, not too used to all this. Well, he hell, look at us go. And all of my blabbering about flags and whatnot, I've managed to make it to the third and final panel. But you know what this means? It just means that I have to draw the UK one more time. This panel isn't too different from panel one, except right now we get the EU telling Britain to go pound sand. I based this comic off of a single headline I read in the newspaper a few weeks back. Um, it was something about Britain regretting their decision to leave the EU, I think. And maybe they would get the chance to be, I think, an associate member, I want to call it. That's honestly, that's all I remember. It, it could all be crap for all I know. But, you know, as they say, accuracy and my Poland ball... It's less likely than you think. Usually what I like to do is just read a single headline and base my entire comic off of that and the stereotypes and in-jokes that I can place around that. These comics were never meant to be read like a historical encyclopedia, and I genuinely feel really, really bad for people who take these at face value because, oof, they must have a pretty rough outlook. But, I mean, they can always go crack a book, but if they're getting all their information from Poland Ball Comics, I doubt that's in the cards. And I find, for the most part, the super accurate comics usually lack a joke, because a lot of the times, history isn't really a laughing matter. It's full of brutal chaos and horrible things. After all of my suffering drawing so many Union Jacks, I finally get to draw Dejected Britain. He looks about as tired as I do. I can imagine it's hard for the British to have the Europeans constantly laughing at them. Although, I guess I want to go out on a limb and assume that happened even before Brexit. Well, with all those sunburn jokes and whatever. Oh, yeah, and you can't forget the jokes about whales either. Those ones are good. I'm not so certain I can really say them here, but if you know, you know. Ah, Now, I'm noticing that my EU is a bit goofy looking. Something about it just seems, I don't know, like off-center or something. Ah, well. The EU can be a goofy organization, so I'll just chalk it up to symbolism. I mean, seriously, who puts their capital in Belgium? Wait, I think NATO did that. Never mind. All joking aside, though, I think what I'm trying to get at is sometimes your balls just look a little bit messy and you just don't really have time or will to fix it. And these comics, they're supposed to look rough, like my EU just did there. Why bother fixing it? It's, you know, it's a pull and ball comic. Who really cares? You get the point. It's a 
fun, you know, blue looking thing with stars. It's the EU. We all know it. Well, my friends, it seems that we are coming upon the punchline of the comic, also known as the ending. Uh, at least for most people, it's the ending. Sometimes people like to do some Ferris Bueller stuff, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm happy it's the ending because honestly, I'm running out of things to talk about. This video was obviously done completely on MS Paint, which I guess makes me look like a noob. I would never honestly recommend it to someone for actual artistic purposes, but as we saw here, it really served its purpose, and it served its purpose well, at least when it comes to making a pull and ball comic. But they're pretty simple. I actually had a lot of fun making this, so I plan to do some more soon. This one was mostly experimental to see if I could get the hang of all the software involved, and to also see if I had the courage to actually talk into a microphone. At the beginning, I was feeling pretty nervous, but now I am feeling more confident. Ideally, the next video will have more panels, more plot, and definitely more characters. Hopefully, I'll get some backgrounds in there too. Nothing crazy, but something that looks nice. I'll try hard to get some harder flags in there as well, like America, Mexico, and maybe even Bhutan. All right, not Bhutan, but you get the picture. Anyways, thanks for suffering through this with me, everyone. Now let's see that final product.